Hello, in this video I'm going to show you our implementation of uh, multiple template matching in the NIME Analytics platform and uh, so to begin with uh, I'll show you how to install it um, so the whole thing relies on um, of course NIME and a set of extensions so uh, namely the Python integration, the NIME image processing so for those you just go like, you just go like usually in file install NIME extensions and uh, basically when you will open the workflow file if there is any extension missing then NIME will automatically propose to download them um, then for the Python environment um, you can refer to the instruction available on the GitHub repository uh, which is this one here which will be soon public um, so there are a number of files in this repository the first one is the workflow file itself which will open in, uh, in uh, NIME directly and the second important file is this environment um, which is uh, for the Anaconda Python environment manager uh, defining every every dependencies necessary uh, to run the workflow so you can uh, yeah as you can see there's OpenCV, scikit image and a number of them um, so you can download those two files um, and once you have it on your local computer then if you I assume you have already Anaconda installed then you can open the prompt type uh, conda environment create dash f for file and then the name of the environment file dot yml so this has to be uh, typed in the folder containing this uh, environment file and then if you hit enter Anaconda will automatically create a new uh, environment with all dependencies. Finally, in the last step is to uh, actually tell Byte, uh, to tell Nime where to find the Python. So for that, you go here, Nime Python, and then Python three, and you point to the exe, which should be in some some folder of Anaconda env, and the name of the uh, environment is should be uh, something like this. So once you have that, you're pretty much ready to go. Uh, once you have downloaded also the workflow file, which by the way is all, will also be on node speed space, um, then you can just open it here in uh, the NIME Analytics platform and you should see something like this. Um, the way to understand it uh, is from left to right, basically. On the left, we have the inputs. In the middle, we have the processing. And on the right side, we have the result and visualization. All kind of interaction points are highlighted in green. So either uh, the image input here, also those two are kind of uh, interactive um, meta nodes. Here we can set parameters for the template pre-processing, so flipping and rotation. So basically the initial list of templates that you um, select in this initial node will be rotated and flipped. And uh, the idea is to, yeah, generate additional template for the search to improve the probability to find the objects. Just keep in mind that the more templates or the more transformation, the longer the computation. Um, also for the match template, we have a couple of parameters, choice of the score, expected number of objects in each image, score threshold, and maximum overlap between detections. Um, and finally, uh, the view are detailed once the workflow has run. So uh, let me show you what image I have here. Yeah, so um, this is actually a sample image available with Fiji's. It's here an RGB image. Um, if we, yeah, if we see it here. Um, internally uh, for match tem uh, template matching uh, is only defined for a grayscale image. Um, so the RGB image are internally converted to uh, grayscale, but it works, to, it works just the same kind of transparently for, for the users and uh, other template I think I cropped this guy so the template is defined in this uh, first node for this one I already kind of loaded the image but it has to be smaller well, let me have it here it has to be smaller than the search image of, of course uh, here I'm not going to do any pre-processing because we have a circular objects so it doesn't really make sense and uh, what then for the template matching this time I can put let's say 20 objects, oh, not 200, and um, yeah, 
a uh, user correlation score and a score threshold of 0.5. So I want only detection above this score for a correlation and a maximum overlap of 25% is rather decent. So let's, let's run it. In this case, I just have one image, but we could have, of course, a, is a list of image. As I will show you before, you can also replace the image reader input by a list file input and just uh, yeah, drag the connection there. Um, so as you can see, the interactive segmentation view popped up. Uh, the result is this mask image with the detections and you can uh, see them overlaid on the initial image. Uh, unfortunately, this interactive segmentation view does not have the RGB rendering, but you can see uh, individual uh, RGB channel here. All right. Um, so I could increase possibly the number of objects and maybe decrease the threshold to try to catch more objects. Uh, for each detection, you get the correlation score here. And you can also isolate them by right clicking and selecting uh, filter selected. And then you just uh, see what object and what uh, score is. Okay. Let me show you now another example uh, with a different image. So I can, I could eventually just uh, replace here. Yeah, I could uh, browse again, uh, change here the embryo, the templates. Uh, of course, you can also pr uh, provide a list of templates instead of a unique one. Um, but because the whole thing is kind of modular, I already prepared my template for the next uh, search. So this time we are going to do head detection in zebrafish larvae. So this is my template and the corresponding image are here. Let me just replace this guy. Here we go. So this time I'm providing a list of image and they're all um, yeah, grayscale image, single, single channel image. Um, I don't do any pre-processing again, no flipping, no rotation, uh, because the larvae are already aligned. Uh, so with a single template, I should be able to locate them. Uh, just let me update the parameters for detection. Now we just expect one object in each image because we have one fish larvae. And then those parameters are not even necessary to tweak for a single object detection, actually. Uh, let's run it again. So if you're a bit curious, uh, you can also even enter the meta nodes. Uh, you see a first kind of layer, which here is defining the graphical user interface. And inside this other wrap node, you can see uh, that the processing is actually performed by this uh, Python node. Um, you can actually even look at the source code, which is in the uh, yeah, Python code, simple Python code. So the whole thing is a bit suboptimal because the processing is shared between um, the Python environment and uh, the Java virtual machine on the NIME side, uh, but this might change in the future and then uh, we'll be able to react faster. So in a bit, we're going to get our detections. Here we go. So again, if you click on the image, you can see an overlay. You can also have a, a preview of the table. And if I scroll, you can see that the template matching worked quite nicely. Um, last example I want to show you is with multiple objects. And this time we're gonna do uh, some pre-processing of the templates. So here, there we go. So the list of images looks like this. So as you can see, there are uh, X plus uh, Medaka uh, X larvae, plus Medaka X, sorry, are uh, kind of randomly oriented. So compared to our initial template, which was just a crop of one of them, we are going to perform some flipping and rotation to improve the chance to find the, the samples. So let's say 45, 90, 90, we are just yeah, selecting a random set of angles. You can have a look here at the result of the rotation and flipping, just to see if you're happy with them. Uh, some of them look smaller, but uh, actually it's just that the image is 
scaled because they are actually bigger. And the reason why uh, they are bigger is that they are, uh, they are the, the guys rotated by uh, non-square angles. And if you have a look, uh, indeed, there are some extra image area. Um, so the reason is that when you rotate a square image uh, by a non-square angle, then you have some kind of black areas that appear, background areas. And to prevent them from uh, penalizing the score, we are filling them with the initial, well, the, the closest pixel value from the initial image. That's why we have these kind of rays. Um, in this case, it won't be much of a problem because uh, it's kind of very similar to the, back, uh, the background gray level. But keep in mind that uh, this might yeah, be more of a problem maybe with um, a template which are rectangular because then you create more of those uh, background areas. Um, this time I expect four objects in each image and the uh, cost ratio of 0 0.5 and 0 0.25 for the overlap is still fine. And let's run it. So again, you can uh, reuse basically uh, parts of the workflow in a custom uh, custom uh, image processing workflow, where then you would do some analysis on the detected area. So from here, pointing to some, I don't know, classification, object analysis, this is completely possible. You also have some uh, documentation provided in the, in the template itself, here about the parameters. And as well on the on the wiki, we have a wiki section on, on the GitHub repository. Okay, here we go. So again, just click on the image to get the overlay. And as you can see, it nicely worked in most cases. I think that's it for the NIME implementation. Um, I invite you to have a look at the Fiji implementation as well, if you didn't, didn't you, if you didn't do yet. And uh, yeah, thank you for your attention. And I wish you to have fun with those template matching. Bye.